Hello, I... There's a guy, two neighbours across, doing something in his garden and a minute ago we made eye contact with him accidentally. Now he keeps looking up here and he can see me. I don't I wish. Go away. Anyway, hi, welcome back to my channel. I was going to have my shirt like this, you know, good vibes, and I was going to put a necklace on, but I can't find any of my necklaces. I don't know where they've gone. So then I was going to do like a top button vibe. What do you think is more of a vibe? This? Or this? Gonna just leave it like this because it's easier. Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jazz. This is Travels and Fiction. And we have a book haul. So exciting. So for Valentine's Day this year, we decided to do a little virtual book shopping extravaganza online because we obviously couldn't go anywhere and it was really fun and I love to buy books. We love to buy books. So I figured I would show you what I bought and also what any books I've acquired and or been gifted by publishers over the past few months. And I'm going to show you what books Ben got as well because um, I will be stealing all of them. Oh, he is just so considering moving the curtain because I just keep making eye contact with him. I'm going to do it. It's just too awkward. I can't deal. I hope that hasn't dramatically changed the um, lighting, but I just drew the curtain to the portion in which he stood just so I don't have to make eye contact with him because it's really awkward. Okay, anyway, <sighs> moving swiftly onwards, anxiety from the household. The first book I was gifted is The Conductors by Nicole Glover. Um, this is published by Del Rey on the 4th of March. I'm not usually into fantasy, although I'm really beginning to think I should stop saying that because I have prefaced that in like every single video and then gone on to talk about a fantasy book. So maybe I should realign my reading preferences. Anyway, this is a book that focuses on the Underground Railroad, but with magic. So it's like historical fiction, fantasy, with magic. I'm really interested to see like how it's done and it just sounds so interesting and I'm really intrigued to see how the magic is incorporated. So that is the first one. The second book I was gifted is from Doubleday and I actually requested this book because I saw it in their catalogue and I was just like that sounds amazing and it is Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Tushimura. Um, I'm really sorry if I pronounced that name incorrectly. This is a Japanese translation. Again, it incorporates elements of fantasy. I believe the correct word for this book is a portal fantasy. Look at me with the names. And the whole premise just sounds so interesting. We follow five students, I believe. Seven. Seven students who, instead of going to school, basically go through this portal into um, this castle and let me read out the synopsis bit for you. In this new sanctuary, they must uncover the stories which unite them all and solve a set of clues to discover a key with the power to grant one wish. But there's a catch. If they don't leave by five o'clock, they will die. As time passes, a devastating truth emerges. Only those brave enough to share their story will be saved. It just sounds so interesting. It kind of has like like the fantasy but also dystopian elements and I think this book is going to very much heavily focus on mental health and anxiety and the power of human connection all things I love in books and so I'm so excited to read this one this one comes out on the 22nd of April the last one the publisher reached out to me and I thought it sounded really interesting so I kindly accepted a finished copy of the book and that is How We Met, A Memoir of Love and Other Misadventures by Huma Qureshi. Um, this sounds so interesting and so many people I have followed, I follow on Instagram have been absolutely raving about this memoir um, saying that they started it to just have a look and ended up reading the whole thing in one sitting like it just sounds amazing this has been described as a memoir about love and grief and family and what it means to fall in love with someone that society and like your society are telling you that you shouldn't um, and I've heard amazing things about this book and I'm really excited to read it um, it is already out and published, so be sure to check it out. This is one I'm going to be getting to very soon, I think. 
Okay, now the next ones are ones I have all bought myself. I'll tell you where I bought them from as well because it's kind of interesting. Okay, so the first one is Amphibian by Christina Newworth. This is a very short novella that I picked up. I ordered online from Lighthouse Books in Edinburgh. It came with a lovely bookmark that says look after each other and I've lost my sticker. I think it's downstairs. A little sticker that says I support indie bookshops which is adorable. Um, this book sold me from like the first, I, I like, I read the synopsis and I was like, I have to read this book and I'm so excited. Let me read you the synopsis because I think that is what, it's just what sold it for me and I was like, I need to know what happens. Amphibian tells the tale of Rose Ellis who arrives at work one morning to find that the entire fourth floor has been flooded with water in a desperate attempt to improve productivity. As the water steadily rises, her working situation becomes more and more absurd. Like, what? And also, this cover is amazing. Like, what is this book? What is it? I'm so excited to read it. Like, it sounds like it's going to, it's like going to be a really weird, but like interesting commentary book. And I am really excited to read it. And because it's really short, I'm definitely going to be getting to it soon. Okay, the next book I picked up is The Girls I've Been by Tess Sharp. Super excited for this book. Bisexual icon, main character. Um, Lily from Literally Lily was raving about this book and I was like I need to read this book and I'd already heard amazing things and then um, at this YA panel I attended I believe Juno Dawson was like look out for this book and I was like I already am and now I need to buy it <laughs> so I bought it. This is a YA thriller and it follows this girl whose mum is a con artist and I believe there is something to do with a robbery but I really don't want to read the back cover. I really want to go in just knowing that. I know that also she's bisexual and I love it and um, that is all I need to know. I think I'm going to absolutely love this book. I'm considering doing a very own, its very own reading vlog and maybe starting to do a like bisexual books reading vlog series. Let me know what you think but I'm really excited to read this book. Okay the next one is The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. As you can see I've already I'm almost finished this book and it is absolutely amazing. This is a novel in verse and it reads so wonderfully. We follow Michael as he kind of like a real snapshot of his whole life. So it's like a snapshot of his childhood, his teen years and going into university and discovering drag and discovering a drag society. Um, and it's about his relationship with his gender, with his sexuality, um, and how it kind of like intertwines in terms of like his family and his relationship with his dad and it is stunning. The writing is stunning. I love that it's also set at a UK university. Like I think that's really, again, it's like a really interesting like setting that I don't think enough books are set there. Um, and it's honestly fantastic. I'm reading this because I want to, but also um, because Sophie and Sarah from The Little Contemporary Corner host an LGBTQ plus book club each month and this is the February pick. So yeah, look out for my thoughts in my February wrap up. The next book I picked up is The Private Joys of Nena Maloney by Okecheku Nzelu. This I believe has just come out in paperback but it's been out for a while. It's been out for a year or so ish. The reviews and the way it was blurbed really made me want to pick this one up. I hadn't actually heard of this one um, but it sounds so interesting. It's set in Manchester and we follow Nena Maloney. Um, she, it says, as she approaches adulthood she longs to connect with her Igbo Nigerian culture. Her close and tender relationship with her mother Joni becomes strained as Nena begins to ask probing questions about her father whom Joni refuses to discuss. It sounds like a really interesting character study and questioning of like identity but it's also blurbed as being really funny and I really am intrigued to see how that's done and really love the mix of like serious questions about identity and family and your heritage and the way it's mixed in with wit and like comedy I think is a really interesting way to kind of write and so I'm really excited to read this book. Um, and I hadn't heard of Okacheku Nzelo before so I'm really excited really excited for this one. Also not too many books I've read are set in Manchester. It's, it's very London based when it's UK books so that's really exciting as well. Okay the very final book I picked up is Tokyo You Know Station by Yu Miri. I heard about this one, well I've seen it vaguely on Instagram but I heard about it mostly from Elena who I will link below and her review really sold me. It sounds so interesting. Oh I forgot to say, sorry, all of these ones <laughs> The Girls I've Been, The Black Flamingo and 
the private joys of Nena Maloney all came from Gaze the Word, who now have an online bookshop you can filter by identity. It's amazing. Please go and check it out. Okay, yeah, sorry, Tokyo Uno you know, Station. It sounds so interesting. It kind of has, I guess, elements of fantastical because the main character is a ghost um, and he was a homeless man who lived at Tokyo Uno you know, Station. Um, I'll read you about the little synopsis. Born in Fukushima in 1933, the same year as the Emperor, Kazu's life is tied by a series of coincidences to Japan's imperial family and to one particular spot in Tokyo, the park near Yuno Station, the same place his unquiet spirit now haunts in death. It is here that Kazu's life in Tokyo began, as a labourer in the run-up to the 1964 Olympics, and later where he ended his days, living in the park's vast homeless villages, traumatised by the destruction of the 2011 tsunami and enraged by the announcement of the 2020 Olympics. I think this one sounds really interesting. Definitely go and check out Elena's review um, because I obviously haven't read this yet, but I'm really excited to read this one. So those are the books that I have bought and I'm so excited to get to all of them. I thought I would quickly show you the books that Ben bought as well because I'm definitely going to be stealing them. Um, I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but I'll just show you them. So we've got Things We Say in the Dark by Kirsty Logan. I believe this is a thriller um, and I'm very excited to steal it. The next one is Forever Ends on Friday by Justin A. Reynolds. This one sounds so interesting um, and kind of has elements of like grief, not time travel, but like bringing someone temporarily back from the dead, whatever that's called. Very excited to read this one. Um, then I've already read this one, but super excited that we now own a copy because I listened to this on audiobook uh, and it's Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson, one of my favourite books ever. So excited for Ben to read it. And the next one is Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. I've just read Get a Life, Chloe Brown. So excited that we also now own Take a Hint, Danny Brown. So obviously we'll be stealing that. Might also read this in the bisexual like reading vlog series. Really let me know what you think. I feel like that's gonna, that could be a fun video because um, I really wanna read more bisexual books. And then the last book that Ben bought, but we don't have because um, we got it from Gaze the Word, but they accidentally sent the wrong book. <laughs> so they're sending it is um, how to be ace oh I can't remember who it's by um let me quickly find out it's a graphic novel oh yeah by Rebecca Burgess it's a memoir of growing up asexual and it's so it's like a graphic memoir kind of navigating her asexual identity as well as mental health and so I'm definitely also going to be stealing that from Ben um and that's it those are the books that I have hauled so excited to get to so many of them. I'm trying not to buy too many books lately, um, but I'm really not because I do have quite a lot that I'm excited for. But equally, we are in a pandemic and I was excited to just buy a few books as a treat. So yeah. Um, ah. Let me know if you've read any of these ones and what you thought. Um, and let me know one book that you've bought recently that you're excited about, or just leave me a little book emoji if you are not feeling in a commenty space. Thank you so much for watching. Um, love a book haul, love books. What is that? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in a new video. Bye.